Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another broadcast here at New Destiny Bible Fellowship Church. It's just a glorious day, and we want to thank God for letting us see another Sunday and letting us get to, through a Thanksgiving holiday because God is so great. He's so awesome, and he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah is the highest praise, and we say hallelujah to our Lord and Savior right now. Just to take this time out just to reflect on just being alive. That's enough. He don't have to do anything else, but we're alive today. I'll be reading your hearing Luke 16, verses 10 through 11. And the reading is, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have... So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his word. Let us bow. The Heavenly Father, Father Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob, Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, right now, Lord, we just want to tell you thank you. Thank you, Lord, for just waking us up this morning and starting us on our way, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for watching us, watching over us last night as we slept and slumbered, Lord. Lord, we come with praise on our hearts, Lord, and praise on our lips for you right now, Lord. We come with thanksgiving and with an attitude of gratitude, Father, for just letting us see another day and just blessing us once again, Lord. Lord, we have, if we had a thousand tons, we couldn't thank you enough for what you have done in our lives thus far and what you're going to do in the future, Lord. We come as we just know and we have hope and we know and we have faith that you're just going to provide for us like the Jehovah Jireh that you are, Father. Lord, thank you for being El Shaddai, the almighty God, Father. And thank you for being Elroy, the most high God. And most of all, Father, thank you for your daughter, son, Jesus. Jesus, who hung, bled, and died on the cross for each and every one of our sins. But the love didn't stop there. On that third day morning, he got up with all power, both on heaven and earth, Lord. So because he conquered death, we can conquer death, Lord, and be seated with you one day, Father. Now, Lord, we come ask for forgiveness. Forgive us for all the wrong we've done towards you, towards ourselves, and towards others. Continue to give us a spirit of forgiveness, Lord, because we can't give to you without forgiveness in our heart, Father. Now, Lord, we ask you have your way in this sanctuary on today, Lord. Touch everyone in, in here and on this broadcast, Father. You know their wants and needs. We ask you to meet those needs right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just ask you to continue to be with those who just you know, on their bed of affliction right now, Lord. Give them strength, Father. Continue to guide them and continue to give them peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord. And Lord, for the holiday season, we ask you to be with all bereaved families at this time, Lord. Touch them and continue to give them comfort as they go through their time of grief. Lord, we ask you to be with our pastor. Continue to crown them with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as he leads the people you set before him, Father. Continue to be with his family who stands by his side and supports him through all the things he have to go through, Father. Lord, we ask you to be with the leadership of this church, Father. Continue to help us grow, Lord, and just to have this church go the way you have it to go. Lord, we ask you just continue to be with us day in and day out through all trials and tribulations, Father. We just continue to lean and depend on you. For you said in your word, you'll never leave us nor forsake us, Lord. Lord, we just love you and we magnify your holy name. These are the blessings we ask in your darling son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen, church. We welcome you. We welcome you to another to another service. Uh, virtual service this this Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. For God is a good God and he's worthy to be praised. Amen. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So let's give God a hand clap of praise. Wherever you are, whatever you're going through, let's give him some praise. Let's give him a shout of hallelujah because we believe that it's because of God that we are who we are, that we have what we have. And we just want to thank him this morning. We want to praise him this morning. We want to give him the glory because God deserves all the praise. 
and he deserves all the glory this morning. Amen. Amen. I thank God for each one of you who, who's listening this day because we believe that there's a word for you on today that will help you. Amen. To, to have a closer relationship with him. Amen. Amen. Understand that, that this, this new destiny ministry that we have is, 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 it is not about a religion. Amen. But it's more about a relationship with God. Amen. It's about how closer can we get to Jesus? How, how closer can we get to God? How can we build on our relationship with him? And so we thank God for this opportunity, this to be able to be able to be closer in his presence, to be able to walk more like him and to talk more like him. And I thank God for each one of you on today for being with us here today, knowing that God is in control of everything that we do. Amen. For this holiday season, I, I hope that everyone, hope everyone had a, had a happy Thanksgiving. I hope that you've already, you already confessed and prayed to God for forgiveness for eating too much and, and, and for all the things that, 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 that you did on that day. Amen. Amen. But we thank God. We hope everyone had a very safe, uh, 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 Thanksgiving. Amen. And so, so we just pray unto God for his protection. And as we go through this, through this, through this pandemic season, through the season of a pandemic. Amen. Amen. We just pray God's blessings over everyone. We pray his protection over everyone. And we pray that everyone is, is, is staying safe. Amen. So we thank God for that. And also, uh, I want to especially thank, thank God, but I want to, to also thank you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, for your giving this, this Thanksgiving season. Amen. Amen. Because of your, because of your giving, because of your, your generosity, we were, we were able to, to provide, uh, uh, several boxes of, of Thanksgiving meals, uh, to, to individuals. Amen. Amen. We, we were able to help, help over 23 families. We were able to provide over, over 27 boxes of, of food and 27 turkeys and, and, and things of that nature. And so we just thank God for all that you have done and, 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 and also to our partners. Amen. We, we, we thank God for you as well. Uh, uh, in particular, um, uh, David, David Berkeley over at, at Haverstock Hill apartment who, who was, who opened the doors for us and, 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 and provided us the, the residents that, that we were able to, to support. Amen. We, we thank God. We thank God for them and, and a special thanks to, to you, my new destiny family, uh, and friends for your, for your commitment to, to supporting the effort to be able to serve others. Amen. For there are a lot in need. Amen. There are a lot in need. There, there, there are many who are in need and, 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 and sometimes people are in need and, and their famous word is I'm good. Amen. Amen. But sometimes we, even when a person says I'm good, we still need to provide because, because, because that I'm good is just a way of not wanting people to know. But, but, but we thank God and, and, and as those folks were coming in smiling, they were very grateful to receive what they had. And so I thank God for, for you, my brothers and sisters. And, and, and we will be doing more for, for Christmas and, and in the tune of trying to help feed those who are, to, to, to those who are hungry. Amen. Amen. And it is just such a great need right now in the midst of this pandemic. So I thank God for you. And I thank God for, for making that opportunity available for us. Amen. Amen. Uh, also would like to encourage you to be with us at our Bible study, uh, services on, on Wednesdays at, at seven o'clock. We're studying the book of, of Revelation. So, so we do invite you out to be a part of that, of that service. You can find out more about it by visiting our website, um, at newdestinybfc.org. Or you can um, see the, the flyer that will come up at the beginning or the end of, of service. Amen. So we, we thank God. I also thank God in advance. I thank God for the givers. Amen. I thank God for the tithers of the church. May God bless you. Uh, uh, if you notice on most of our broadcasts, we don't say much about giving. But, but it, I just want to thank those of you who, who have been giving and, and, and giving uh, uh, cheerfully. Amen. Amen. I thank God for you in in your giving and, and supporting the ministry of, of, of the church. Amen. And, and so, and so God is good though. God, God is a good God and he's worthy to be praised. Amen. I hope that this Sunday finds you doing well. I hope 
that this day, that, that even though the temperatures may be a little cooler, I, I, I hope that, that it finds you in good spirit. Amen. Amen. But, but if you're not in good spirit, if, even if you're feeling down this, this morning, there is a word that will help lift you up and to help motivate you, to help empower you, to help encourage you, to let you know that everything will be all right as long as you lean and depend on Jesus Christ. And so we thank God this day for all that he is doing for us. And, and so today, today, there is a word from God. I, I come before you to, to bring a word today from, from God that, that, that I, it is my prayer that this word will help elevate your, your relationship with God, uh, the, your, your commitment to God and, and, and your dedication to God. And, and today's message, it, it, it will come from the Gospel of John. We want to take a look at John uh, chapter 4. This is a very famous uh, passage, but, but we want to take a look at it and, and, and be able to see what God is saying to us on this morning. Let us go to him in prayer. Most gracious Father, Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for this opportunity once again to receive your word. Oh, God, we pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you will open our hearts, our minds, and our ears, God, to receive, to hear, and to feel your word. Oh, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you sit me down and speak through me by the power of your Holy Spirit. These and many other blessings we ask in your darling son, Jesus' name, let us all say amen. Amen. John. Chapter 4, verse number 20. And it begins, Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, Believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. My brothers and sisters, if you would allow me for a few moments this Sunday morning, to preach along the subject matter of a true worshiper, a, a, a true worshiper, not, not, not just a worshiper, but a true worshiper. Uh, uh, you know, you know, we, we, we are conditioned um, to, 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 to understand that, that, that we must come to church and, 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 and we, we have this worship experience in church. We, 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 we play what we call worship songs and, 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 and people come in and, and they stretch holy hands and they have their eyes closed and they, and they sing the slow, uh, uh, songs and, and they rock from side to side and, 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 and in some cases, uh, tears start streaming down your face and, 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 and you find yourself, uh, 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 praising God and, and worshiping God and, and, and you find yourself having this worship experience, uh, in the sanctuary of God. You, 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 you find yourself being able to lift up holy hands and just worship Him and, and just call on Him and, and just be there with Him. And, and, and when that worship is going on and when those songs are played and, and, and all those things are happening, you know, you begin, people begin to shout and people begin to run and people begin to speak in other languages and people begin to, 
to do all of these things and 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 and, and inside of the sanctuary they they are able to do that and and then once the song stops and 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 then and then and then our spirits begin to calm down and we began to to sit back down again in our in our seats and 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 we we when we leave church when we leave church we 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 say woo we we had some 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 good worship praise and worship service at church boy i tell you that choir did quite well with with praise and worship service they ushered in the spirit of god and allowed us to to worship god uh uh uh, uh but 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 i stopped by to tell you this morning that 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 the samaritan woman uh when she was having this conversation uh, with Jesus about worshiping God. Uh, Jesus had to set the record straight about what true worship really is. Uh, uh, Jesus said, Jesus said, yes, I, I understand that's how you worship God, but, but, but today Jesus is going to show us in the text, uh, what true worship really is. Uh, uh, true worship, uh, Jesus, Jesus said to the, to the young lady, he says, he says, there will come a time where, 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 where when the true worshipers will, will begin to, to worship God. And, and, and for God to say the true worshipers, that means that there must be a difference between a worshiper and a true worshiper. Ha uh, ha! Uh, uh, this true worshiper we want to talk about uh, this morning, and 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 understand that 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 the lady, uh, the the Samaritan, she said in verse twenty, she says that our ancestors uh, uh, worship on this mountain, and, and 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 remember how this story played out. Uh, Jesus met this woman at the well, and 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 they began to have this conversation and. And Jesus asked this woman to to draw him some some water from the well, and 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 Jesus began to tell the woman all about her experiences and her lifestyle, and 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 Jesus began to to minister to the woman, and 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 the woman now is letting Jesus know that you know we understand how to worship, we 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 worship as well, and 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 what she said, and and. In verse number in verse number twenty, what she said is she says our ancestors uh, they worship on this mountain, uh, but 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 you Jews claim that the place where we must be where we must worship is is in Jerusalem, and 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 so the lady said that you know we're not allowed to go into Jerusalem, we're not allowed to go into the church house, and so therefore we worship on this mountain and. And, and, and however, you Jews say that we must worship in, in, in Jerusalem. And, and so, and so as, as Christians, we, we understand we have, we have taken this building and, and, and these, these, these large edifices that we have built and, and we call them the house of worship. And, 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 and we say that this is where you, you are to, to worship God. But, 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 but watch how God sets the record straight for us about worshiping him. Uh, uh, Jesus said it this way in verse 21. He says, woman, believe me, in a, a time is coming uh, when you will worship the father neither on this mountain uh, nor in Jerusalem. He says there will become a time where, where you won't even stand on this mountain top or you won't go into Jerusalem. He says you Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. He says, yet a time is coming and has come when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Now, now what Jesus is talking about here, he says true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and, and in truth. And, and, and so what Jesus is telling us today is that worship is not an event. Oh, worship is, is not a place. Worship is, is, is not a singular event, and worship is not a place. He says, but worship is a way of life. Worship is a lifestyle. Worship is not a single song that you sing that causes tears to come streaming down your face. Uh, a place of worship is not a church house that you go to because if you believe that the only place you can worship is in a house of worship, then during this pandemic when the church is closed, that means that there's no worshiping going on. 
But I stopped by to let you know that worship is a lifestyle. It's a way of living. It is not just place that you call a church. It is not that song that you sing for three and a half minutes and then your worship experience stops. But, but, but worship must be a continuous thing. It must be a lifestyle. We worship God in spirit and in truth. We worship God wherever God is. And therefore, if God is in us, wherever we go, our lifestyle should be a lifestyle of worship. Uh, I want to let you know that, 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 that singing those worship songs, are, that, that, that is good to jumpstart your worship. <laughs> That is good to revive your worship, but, but your worship should be a continuous action. Worship is an action verb. It is, it is not a one-time action. It is a continuous action. And so, therefore, Jesus says that a true worshiper will worship God in spirit, which means that you worship him where you don't even see him, but you worship him where you feel him. And you will worship him also in truth because he is the true God. He is the only God. So he was letting the Samaritan know that, no, who you were worshiping wasn't a true God, but you must worship God in spirit and in truth. Ha ha, you must be a worshiper. I'm trying to talk to some, to some worshipers this morning who say that my worship uh, is my lifestyle. It is my way of living. It is not just when I show up to church on Sunday morning. It's not just when the choir is singing. It's not just when the preacher is preaching. But my worship is every day that I wake up, when I walk down the street, I am worshiping God. When I talk to other folks, I'm worshiping God. Don't you understand that worshiping God simply means to exalt God over everything that you do. It means to lift God above everything that you do. Oh, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you. Worship, worship, worship is not for God. <clears throat> worship is not for God. Worship is for you. Worship is for me. Praising is for God, but worshiping is for me. Worshiping draws me closer to God. Praising God gets his attention so he can come closer to me. So if you want to build a closer relationship with God, you need to begin to worship him because worshiping draws me near God. Worshiping draws me near God because, because God doesn't need me. I need God. Uh, I don't know about you. If you walk around here thinking God really needs you, he doesn't need you. You need him. And therefore, you are to worship him so that you can find yourself getting closer to him. So, 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 yes, we do come into the sanctuary and have praise and worship service. But that is just to jumpstart and revive the worship that is already in you. Uh, that this, 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 this form of, of, of worshiping is, is, is just to allow us to lift up the name of, of Jesus. To lift him up above all things. You know, you know, you know, what, what is it? What would it really be like to be able to have a group of true worshipers? Those who worship God daily in their spiritual walk. Those who worship God daily in their spiritual talk. And then you bring those worshipers together and you bring them into the house of the Lord. Wherever two or three are gathered that are worshiping God who are true worshipers, can you imagine what type of worship experience you will have? But for too long, we've been waiting to come to the church to worship him. Uh, but Jesus said you must worship him in spirit and in truth if you want to be a true worshiper. Uh, I'm not talking about just a worshiper. I'm talking about a true worshiper this morning. Someone that will say this morning that, that I, I, I want to worship him with my life. I want to worship him. I, because if it has to be a lifestyle, if it has to be a way of life, then that means I have to give my life to him. That there's no way that you can keep your life for yourself and say that you are a true worshiper of God. Because to worship him, it means that you must give your life to him. It is your way of living. It's your way of walking. It is your way of talking. So, 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 so if you may be asking yourself, well, pastor, 
I like your introduction. I like what you said about worshiping. And, 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 and I want to become a worshiper this morning. I want to make this a part of my lifestyle. I, I don't want to just come to church on Sunday morning and worship him and then forget about all of the worship part until that next song is played on the radio, until that next song is played on my phone, until the next time I come to church, then I start to worship him again. But, but, but no, I'm not talking about worshiping him as in stretching your arms, closing your eyes, and tears come rolling down. That's not the worship I'm talking about. Worshiping God is what I'm talking about, is even when you're walking with your eyes open, you still can say that my God is a good God. And that when you're going through tough situations, you can say that my God will handle it. I believe that my God will deal with it. When you are faced with, with difficulty, you can turn it over to God. You can exalt his name and say that God is still good. Even when you're at a funeral, you can say God is good. Even when you're broke, you can still say God is good. Even when you got money in your pocket, you can say God is good. Even when you're on a valley low, you can say God is good. You can exalt his name over everything. That's the sign of a true worshiper. That is the sign who can praise God in spirit and in truth. But now I know you may be asking yourself, but, 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 but how, if I have not been this way, how can I become this way? What is it that I need to do in order to become a true worshiper? I, I, I thank Paul for this because, 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 because Paul, in his letter to the Romans, he, he was explaining how to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth by adopting a lifestyle of worship. <laughs> See, everybody needs to get this, this lifestyle of worship. Everybody needs to understand that, that, that we're living, we ought to be living a lifestyle of worship, not a, not a Sunday morning of worship, not, 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 not a 20 minute worship period in my life, but it has to be a lifestyle of worship. And, and, and Paul explains to us in Roman how it is that, that, that we should do things and, and not just do things out of tradition and rituals, you know, not, not, not to just do things that way, but, but how it becomes a lifestyle. And so when you go to Romans chapter 12, uh, um, many of you know this text, but, but, but you probably didn't understand that, that Paul was really teaching about adopting this lifestyle of worship. And, and so Paul puts it this way in Romans chapter 12 when he was trying to teach the, the Romans how to worship in spirit and in truth. And so it says here, Romans 12 and 1, Paul says it's this way. He says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. He says, this is your true and proper uh, worship. Uh, he says in, in verse number two, he says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He says, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Ha, oh, ha, oh, Paul says it very clearly to us. He says, I urge you, my brothers and sisters, who's listening to this message on New Destiny Bible Fellowship Facebook page today. He says, I urge you, the word of God is here. I urge you in the view of God's mercy. If mercy is helping you today, if mercy woke you up this morning, if mercy starts you on your way, he says that in the view of God's mercy that woke you up this morning, he says, I want you to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice that is holy and pleasing unto God. So he's saying to us that in our true worship experience, we must offer our bodies a living sacrifice unto God. We must offer this what we have unto God. We must give ourselves over to God and say that, that, that God, I'm not just going to give myself on Sunday mornings to you, but God, I'm going to give myself every day to you. Paul puts it this way. He says that there must be a dedication. He says there must be a dedication. He says, says to present is to dedicate. 
There, there must be a dedication. We, we do this all the time in church. We dedicate our children unto God. But how many of you have dedicated yourself unto God? And, and dedication, I stop by to let you know, it's not a singular event. Uh, dedication is something that we should be doing daily unto God. You dedicate yourself daily unto him. Every day you wake up, you ought to say, God, I dedicate my life unto you. God, I dedicate this body unto you. Because dedicating it unto God is a form of worshiping him and saying, God, I trust you to take care of my life. I'm talking to somebody this morning that's going through whatever you're going through. I stop by to let you know before you try to fix what you're going through, dedicate your life unto God. Give your life unto God. I don't, don't tell me, well, I already dedicated my life unto God. No, dedication happens every day, every second, every minute, and every hour. You have to continuously dedicate yourself unto God. You have to present it. And, 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 and how Paul puts it, he says, he says, as a living sacrifice. He says, God wants your body while it's alive now. God wants your body while it's alive. In the, in the, in the Old Testament, they had to present unto God, unto the altar, the, these living sacrifices. But God said, I want you to present your bodies as living sacrifices. If you present your bodies as living sacrifices, if you give it over to me, if you, if you turn it over to me, I want it to be alive. Now, 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 now watch what God says about our bodies. Now, he says three things about your body. He says, I want it to be alive, I want it to be holy, and I want it to be pleasing. I want it to be alive, he said, he said, he said, bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto God. It has to be alive, it has to be holy, and it has to be pleasing unto God. That's what we want to present to God as our body. This is our worship unto him, is to continuously try to make our bodies more alive, more holy, more pleasing to him. Because if we are saying that we are believers, if we are saying that we are worshipers, then we are saying that we are trying to get it more right each day. And so we are trying to present something that is pleasing unto God each day. And then, and then he says, he says, he says to them, he says, this is your true and proper worship. This is all it is, you all. Your true worship. Your true worship. Your true worship. Your true worship is how you walk every day. Your true worship is how you talk every day. Your true worship is what you think about every day. Oh, my goodness. It, it's not just how what you speak. But what's in your heart, what's in your mind, that is your true worship unto God. How you present your bodies to God, that is your true worship. So if you want to say that you're a worshiper, it's not about singing a song. It's about presenting your body unto God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's not about singing. Worshiping is not about singing. Worshiping is about our walk. Worshiping is our lifestyle. Worshiping is the way we are supposed to behave. Worshiping is our moral compass that keeps us going every day, that shows us how to treat each other, that shows us how to love one another, that shows us how to forgive one another, that shows us how not to lean to our own understanding, but all our ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct our path. Worshiping is giving it over to God. If you dedicate your life to God, you say, God, my life is now in your hands, so God, do with it what you please. And God, I trust you. And God, I trust you. And, 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 and to those of you who say, well, Pastor, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do it, but it's, it's, it's tough. It, it's tough, Pastor, because, yeah, I want, I want to give my body over to God. But, boy, it's a little hard because I start thinking about how this world treated me. I start thinking about all the social injustices. I start thinking about all of the calamities that surround me. I start thinking about all of the people that's dying that I know. I start thinking about all of the things that's going on around me. And so it becomes very difficult to present my body, to dedicate my body unto God, to present my mind unto God. And so, and so, and so Paul says it this way. Paul lets us know what is the first step in presenting your body over to God. Paul says it this way. He says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, huh? but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
Paul says the first step in the dedication process is to transform your mind, transform your way of thinking. Before you can change your surroundings, you have to change what's on the inside of you. And Paul says that you do not conform to the patterns of this world. Do not insulate yourself in the patterns of this world. Just because the world say that you can do it doesn't mean that you ought to do it if it goes against the word of God. Because remember, we are pilgrims passing through. We're not really in this land. It's not really our land. We on borrowed time here. This is a borrowed facility. This is a borrowed place. This is not your permanent home. So God says that dedicate yourself. Change your way of thinking. He says renew your minds. You need to renew your minds. You need to think about things that are more pure. Think about things that are more holy. This transformation has to take place. First, you have the dedication and saying, God, I give my life to you. And once you say you give your life to him, then a transformation has to occur where you change the things that you think about. And, and, and let me help you with this. Let me help you with this because it's easier said than done. See, standing behind this pulpit, it's easy for me to tell you, change the way you think. Change the way you think. Change the way you think. Now, the renewing of your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Wait a minute, pal. What you mean be transformed by the renewing of my mind? What you mean that I ought not be thinking about certain things? What do you mean? How do I stop thinking about when people did me wrong? How do I get that out of side of me? How do I think? How do I stop thinking about all the things that have happened to me and how I think bad about those who did them to me? How do I do it? Paul says it this way. If you are a true worshiper, then you bring in the text from John that says you have to worship Jesus. We have to worship God in spirit and in truth then it means that when those evil thoughts or when those negative thoughts come into your mind, you're supposed to raise God above them. You're supposed to say, but God is still good. You're supposed to be able to feel that negative energy with some positive energy about God. I dare you to start speaking God over those negative thoughts in your head. I dare you that every time a negative thought come in your head, Turn around to a good thought that God has already given you. Think about something that God has done for you. Think about, yeah, I had those things happen to me, but thank God that I'm still alive today. Yes, I had some bad days in my life, but thank God that I can get it right today. Yes, some things, some people have done me wrong, but thank God that I'm here today. He says that you have to renew your mind. You have to rethink, you have to retrain the way we think. We cannot conform to this world. We cannot have the hatred that this world has, but we have to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So you need to think about what you're thinking about. And you need to think about what, when you're thinking about what you think about, if it's leading you down a path of destruction, you need to rethink your thinking process. Ha, ha, ha. You, you need to understand that, 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 that the word says that, that, that when we are transformed, when we, when we transform our minds, that means that when we reshape our minds, he said, he said, he said, the renewing of your mind, this transformation will cause your mind to be renewed again, will give it new strength, will give it new power, and you will be able to worship God. Even in the midst of adversity, you will still say God is good. Even in the midst of struggles, you will still say God is good. Even in the midst of, of any traumatic experience, you will still say God is good. He says, then you will be able to test and approve what God will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Paul is talking to us this morning. He, he's, he's telling us very clearly. He's saying that, listen, we have to present our bodies this true form of worship that Jesus is talking about, worshiping in spirit and in truth to be a true worshiper, simply means that we must walk in the spirit. We must walk in the spirit. We must not understand that, 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 that worshiping is not just lifting holy hands, but worshiping is just lifting God over everything. Worshiping is, is, is lifting God. And if you continue to lift God over your situation, I guarantee you, God will do something miraculous in your life. I guarantee you, God will show up in your life. God will show out in your life. If you present your bodies unto God, a living sacrifice that is wholly acceptable and pleasing unto him, he will supply your needs according to his riches and glory. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will be with you until the ends of time. But it is our job as Christians to present ourselves unto God a living sacrifice. It is our job to be a true worshiper, 
to worship him in spirit and in truth. Not just to worship him in a sanctuary, not just to worship him inside of a building, not to worship him as a singular event, but to worship him everywhere we go. And worship is not just screaming out hallelujah. Worship is how you think. Yeah. Worship is how you walk. Worship is how you talk. Even in a normal everyday conversation, you can be giving God the praise just by the positivity that's coming out of your mouth. Just by speaking positive, just by speaking love, you are speaking, you are worshiping God. So God is looking for some true worshipers this morning. God is looking for some true worshipers. I know this pandemic tried to destroy your worship because you thought that you had to be in church in order to worship God. I know that this, that this pandemic may have put some questions in your mind about, about, your, about, about your relationship with God. But I'm stopping by to let you know that, that, that if you just continue to be a true worshiper, you continuously walk with God and talk to God and bring God into every situation that's going on in your life, that he will be there for you. And you will be considered a true worshiper, yes. not one that needs to come to church to lift holy hands, because that is just to revive the worship that is inside of us. So I want to encourage you this morning. I want to encourage you this morning to live a lifestyle of worship. Make worship your lifestyle. Make worship your way of life. Make worship the things that you do. And it's not that I'm saying that you got to say God's name in every other sentence you say. It is just being able to speak pleasing words, being able to speak positive words, being able to speak positive over negative, being able to not to be a part of any, any of that gossiping, but, but be able to speak life into a dead situation, be able to let your light shine in a dark place. That is your form of worship. And as you worship God, it will draw you nearer to him and you will have a deeper relationship with him. I want to encourage you today to make worship your lifestyle. Say that I am a true worshiper. I worship God in spirit and truth. And that is the job that God has left me to do. May God bless you. May he keep you is my prayer. We thank God for you. Now, 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 before we leave this message, before we leave, before we leave today, there may be someone here today. There may be someone here today who, who, who's listening right now. And you just don't know Jesus. You don't even have that relationship to understand how to worship him. Because again, you, in order to worship him, you have to be a believer in him. And you may not even be a believer in him. You may, have, you, may, you may have never given your life over to Christ. You may not even know Christ until you heard this message today. I want to pray for you. Or there may be someone here today who, who may have given their life over to Christ, but, but, but thought they were worshiping God, but now they learn today, you know what, I will just worship him in a place. But, but, but my worship is a lifestyle. I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for you today. Heavenly Father, Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you touch the hearts of the believers. That you be with those who don't believe right now, God. That you let them see the light. Let them come to the light, God. Let them give their life over to you. Let them dedicate their lives over to you, God. Knowing that once they dedicate their life over to you, that this is a continuous dedication, God. That we are giving our life over to you daily, oh Heavenly Father. We are surrendering to you daily. We are submitting to you daily, God. It is not just a single event, O oh Heavenly Father, but it's a continuous action, God. Let them, O oh Heavenly Father, give their life to you tonight, God. Today, God, let them lift holy hands, God, and say, O oh Heavenly Father, that you are seated at the right hand of the Father, God. That you are a living God, God, and that you want a living sacrifice, O oh Heavenly Father. Oh God, I thank you, oh God, for Jesus being the ultimate sacrifice, God, to giving us this opportunity, God, to be able to praise you right now, to be able to lift you up right now, God. Oh God, I pray for that believer. I pray for that non-believer that they become a believer, oh Heavenly Father. I pray for that doubter right now, God. I pray, oh Heavenly Father, that you remove the doubt, oh God. Oh God, I pray, oh Heavenly Father, that you touch that person, oh Heavenly Father, that's going through whatever they're going through. I pray a healing over their lives, oh God. I speak, oh Heavenly Father, blessings into their life. Oh God, touch us all and keep us all. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to say to you, 
for those of you who don't know God, that there is a simple plan to God's salvation. And if you would like to receive a copy of God's simple plan of salvation, I want to encourage you just to send me an email. The email will, will, will appear on the screen. We will email you God's simple plan for salvation. And once you give your life over to God, and again, this is not about an event. This is about a lifestyle. This is like a lifestyle. This, this whole Christianity walk is a lifestyle walk. It's not a singular event. And so we want to encourage you. We want to encourage you. So if you would, if you would just send me an email and let me know that you would like a copy of God's Simple Plan of Salvation, and we will send it to you. You'll see my email address there at jpgardner at newdestinybfc.org. If you're in need of prayer, send me an email. Let me know that you, there's something that you want me to pray for. This is your way to be able to communicate directly with you. I thank God for each one of you. I pray God's blessing over your life. Pray God's blessings over your family. I pray that God keeps you safe from any hurt, harm, or danger. I pray for those who, who, have, who have succumbed to the COVID pandemic, those who are those who are dealing with the pandemic. The Bible speaks of pandemics, and we understand that this is a way of life, but we understand that God is much bigger than any pandemic. We understand that he is exalted above all things. So I want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters, to continue worshiping God in spirit and in truth by the way we walk, by the way we talk, and by the way we think. And that will be pleasing unto God. May God bless you, may he keep you, and may you stay safe. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest through the Bible with all of us henceforth and forevermore. Let the church all say amen. God bless you. Amen.